from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Baseball legend Jackie Robinson's philosophy is embedded in this quote. A life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. Robinson certainly had an impact. He made history and changed the course of race relations in this country when he donned a Brooklyn Dodger uniform in 1947 and broke the color barrier in baseball. His courage and professional excellence challenged long-held prejudices. Unquestionably, Jackie Robinson has an extraordinary impact on baseball, on our society, and the advancement of social equality. Perhaps, though, his greatest influence has been on his family and his only daughter, Sharon Robinson. Sharon is an educational and consultant for Major League Baseball and vice chairman of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. She founded Major League Baseball's Breaking Barriers in, in, in Sports in Life, a national education program designed to teach children the values and skills necessary to tackle life's challenges. She has also taken on the role of being guardian of her father's legacy and is committed to passing on the knowledge of his life and accomplishments to new generations of children. She has written numerous books about her father and has collaborated with renowned artist and illustrator Kadir Nelson to create her first picture book titled Testing the Ice, a true story about Jackie Robinson. I love this part of the story. The genesis of their new book started right here at the National Book Festival. This is where they met, and this is how they started their partnership. Isn't that great? And we know that Kadir Nelson needs little introduction. He is a two-time Caldecott winner, and he became immersed in Robinson's life years before they began working together. He spent countless hours studying Robinson for his award-winning book, We Are the Ship, The Story of Negro League Baseball, which won both the New York Times Best Illustrated Children's Book and the Coretta Scott King Author Award. Testing the Ice is a benefiting metaphor for Robinson's heroic efforts in shattering baseball's color barrier, and Sharon and Kadir have added to his legacy with this new work. It's amazing. And as the custodian of the Jackie Robinson's papers, the Library of Congress is very proud to have been entrusted with preserving that legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Sharon Robinson and Kadir Nelson. Good afternoon. Uh, Kadir and I are thrilled to be here. We, we've, start, we've been here for a few days, so we've started to work out our little routine. So I go first, and he comes on second with a nice, fun activity, and then we'll have questions and answer. But we're really thrilled to be here. This is my third time in National Book Festival, and it's something that I really cherish the invitation and look forward to coming to Washington, D.C. I went to college here. I'm a graduate of Howard University. I, I taught at Howard and Georgetown, so I came back to teach. And um, I've li I lived here for many years, so it's wonderful to be back in Washington. I'm going to talk to you today about our new book. It's called Testing the Ice, a true story about Jackie Robinson. And this is a book uh, that tells the story of my father testing the ice before we're allowed to go ice skating. It takes place in 1955. My family has just moved into our new house, which we built on six acres, and it was surrounded by woods and water. And at, it sat on a hill, and at the base of the hill was this lake that started at our house and went all the way down the road to a far neighbor's. The best part of this new house for my dad was the fact that we had privacy. The best part for my brothers and I was the lake and all the activities that allowed us to enjoy, and our new friends, Candy, Willie, Danny, and Candy. I have to stop for one second. I apologize. Kadir's mother is here, and she's representing both of our families. Would you please stand up? And his niece, Namaya, would you please stand up and give a wave? She, it was her birthday. So my family is in Africa, so I, I just told Kadir's mom, I'm so happy she's here, but she's representing both of us, so. 
Okay, moving right along. So in 1950, this story takes place in 1955, so the story has to open up with the Dodgers beating the New York Yankees. I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not supposed to be uh, partial because I don't want to upset any Yankee fans, but it was a big celebration um, for the Dodgers and in our home. And it moves right into the story of us moving into our, our house on Cascade Road. The fun part of this book is uh, there's some reason my father will not join us in the water. So as we read it, we wonder, our kids wonder, why won't he get in the water? So I'm going to read from Testing the Ice. And I'm gonna start at the point where the lake has frozen and we've convinced Dad to go out and test the ice. When we reached the edge of the lake, Dad turned to us and said, wait. Jackie, David, Candy, Willie, Christy and I came to an abrupt halt. Then he ran to the house and returned with a, brovel, a, a shovel and broomstick. As we lined up along the lake's edge, Dad eased out onto the snow-covered ice. Dad, be careful, I shouted. Don't fall in, David screamed. I grabbed Christy's mitted hand and squeezed. What's wrong, she whispered. I'm scared, I replied, as a reality suddenly dawned on me my dad can't swim. Jackie Jr. twisted the cord attached to his sled. David, D Candy, and Willie stepped closer to the edge of the lake. Dad went further out. The ice crackled beneath his feet. He took another step and cleared the snow from his path with his shovel. From the cleared spot, he was able to tell how thick the ice was. Before he placed one big foot in front of the other, he tapped the ice with his broomstick, testing it for weaknesses or cracks. Tap, tap, tap. Dad took a few steps forward. Tap, tap, tap. Then he took a few more steps, but just as he was about to announce the, announce the life, the ice safe, Boom! A terrible noise roared from below the ice. Dad, I shrieked. I was sure the ice was going to open up and swallow Dad. Jackie Jr. Step, stood ready to shove his sled to Dad. David, Candy, and Willie inched closer to my brother, and we waited for what seemed like forever. Thank you. It was a treat uh, to, to, to meet Sharon. Sharon and I met, we met here, we met in uh, San Diego at a baseball game, and I had written a book, an illustrated book on the Negro Leagues, and uh, so it was a real treat to meet the daughter of Jackie Robinson. I feel like uh, J uh, Sharon is like baseball royalty, and American royalty. So uh, she asked me to illustrate this book, and I thought it was a really great idea, and uh, she sent and it was great because I got to meet, of course, Sharon, but I got to meet her mother as well. And I got to see their childhood photographs. So it was kind of like a, a, a behind the scenes look at, at a, an American royal family. So it was really great. And it came time for me to actually illustrate the book and try to bring the book to life. So I had to take all those pictures and try to change them in a way to fit the story. And that was a, that was a, a lot of fun. And you know, I've been drawing my whole life, and I learned how to draw basically because I, I practiced every day when I, since I was a little kid. So I thought it would be a good idea to share a little bit of that kind of, that, that experience of drawing as a little kid. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna ask for a couple small volunteers because I'm gonna, a couple of the kids are gonna act as if they were characters in this book. So I need two volunteers. Let's see. Young volunteers. Let's see. Okay, here's one right here. And let's see, someone in the back. 
Let's see. Hmm. Right there with the white t-shirt and long hair. All right, all right, hurry up. And actually, you know what? I'll need one more volunteer, one more. With the glasses, right there, okay. Okay, what's your name? Kimani Johnson. Kimani? Jesse? And what's your name? Keisha? Nisha, okay, come on over here, follow me. Okay, one of you guys is gonna have a silent moment. Can you hear me? No. no. Is this? Oh, can we take this off? Okay, they're turning it up. Can All right. Uh, one of you guys is gonna have the role of, of holding the book. It's not as fun, but it's crucial. It's very important. So who would like to do that? You'll do that? Okay, great. Okay, you're gonna hold, the, hold it open to this page here. Here we go. Now, who would like to be Jackie Robinson? You? Okay. And you, you'll be Yogi Berra, okay? <laughs> All right. And by the way, uh, Sharon has always said that this image, this moment in history when Jackie Robinson stole, stole home during the World Series, that he was safe, right? He was safe. And I've taught my one and a half year old son every time we read this book that he was safe. Just so you know. Okay. Okay, stand over here. Okay, now you're Jackie, right? Okay, I'm gonna draw you first. Now what I'm gonna need you to do is make a mean face. And hold it. Okay. Jesse, right? Jesse, Jackie, that's that's pretty close. Okay, here we go. Can you hold that? Yes? Are you mad at me? No? Okay. All right, Jess, okay, here's your face. I think you're mad at me. No? Okay. Okay, now we're gonna draw your nose. You're scaring me, Jesse. And then your eyes, let's see. Oh, she's mean. There's one, there's another eye, eyebrows, and then we'll have your eye there. And you're, you're so cute, why are you looking so mean? Okay, now, and then here's your mouth. And then you have, let's see, I'm gonna give you a little smile, because you're, you're really cute. Now here's, you have two moles right there. And then here's your hair. And we're going to make it kind of blowing in the wind because you're going fast. And then your hat blew off. Okay, now can you hold the book so I can see? Okay, okay, you can look nice. You can, there you go. I like that. There you go. Thank you. I feel so much better. So you're stealing home. Here's your shirt. It says Dodgers. Or something like that. There we go. Let me see your hand. Can I see, where's your hand? There we go. We're gonna make your hand. And you have black fingernails. Why is that? Oh, okay. Here's, there's a hand, and then the other hand is, let's see, make a fist. Turn it, that, move it like that. There we go. I gotta leave room for... And now, now it's time to draw, what's your name again? Nisha, okay, come over here, Nisha. Now you're gonna turn and face the audience and then look down. Okay. Let's see, here's Nisha. 
should I? Okay, we're gonna put glasses on you. You're playing with glasses. There's your nose, there's your mouth. And then you'll need hair. No room for your pony to, well, just put it up there. And then let's see, here's your arm, then your leg. Then there's your, your gear. And then your hand, let's see your hand. Act like you're holding a ball, go like that. There we go. There's your, there's your ball. We need shoes, what kind of shoes are those? Okay, Skechers, we'll put an S on there. And then, let's see, we need legs. Because she's, there's your knee. It's a little messy, I need an eraser. And we're gonna put, let's see, is, he, is she safe or is she out? Safe. She's safe. Safe. Now, how do you spell your name? Actually, I'll just put it on your sleeve, and I'll put an N for Nisha, and then we'll put it on this sleeve, and what is it? J? J. And we'll put a bunch of smoke or dust for all of that dust that you were creating there. How about that? Does that look All like right. one? Oh, wow. Do you like it? Uh, do we have time for questions? Question okay. No, okay, we have we have some time for it's questions and uh, answers. So raise your oh you can go up to the microphones if you have any questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys can go take your seats now. How about a hand for the Children, thank you. Good job, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. There's a question over here. We can't. Is it on? No, it must not be on. Can we have the mics turned on in the audience? That one's working. You want to start right here while she's, they work that out? You got it? Testing. Okay, good. Other than the Yankees and the Giants, what team did your father like to beat? Oh. Oh, boy. Well, the Giants was critical because uh, they were, um, well, the Yankees and the Giants and the Giants and the Dodgers were all in New York, so that's why they were such big rival had such big rivalries. But um, you know, St. Louis, Philadelphia, they treated him very badly in Philadelphia, so you know he wanted to beat them up. Uh, not beat them up, excuse me. Um, he wanted to win. Do you have a favorite team? Uh, the Nationals. Yay! Good for you. Okay. Cheer them on. They'll they'll get stronger and. Okay. <laughs> have you written any other books? Yes, I actually have a novel series. Uh, my main character is Jumper, and it's um, Safe at Home and Slam Dunk, and they are sort of for grades four through, or three through eight. Did you play baseball like your dad does? I played baseball, not exactly like my dad, but I did play baseball. Yes, I, lo I was very athletic. Uh, I played all sports. I had two brothers, and there wasn't any sport that I didn't do. Now, not that I didn't do well, but I did all sports I played. Thank you. 
When your um, father was not playing baseball, what did he, you guys do? Oh, thank you. When my father was not playing baseball, what did we do? Well, I'll tell you, in the summertime, in the springtime, we had to pull the weeds. We had a lot of grounds, and my father cut the grass. Um, we fished together. Uh, he watched us swim. He uh, loved to have discussions about politics, so we sat around the table and talked about politics and the civil rights movement. Um, and then one of the favorite things besides ice skating that I love to do was my father would take me into New York with him and we would go to his office and then we would go shopping and have lunch. Perfect day. <laughs> How old were you when your father died? Oh, I was actually, a, I was here in Washington DC when my father died. I was a senior at Howard University. And the hard part about that is you have to go right back to class. What inspires you? To write this book? I'm sorry, what, what inspires yeah. me? Or to write the book? Yeah, the book. The book, oh. The chance to work with Kadir Nelson. I had to figure out a great story to tell. And I knew this was a great one. How old were you when you wrote your first book? Oh, good question. Well, I kept a journal when I was your age. And I didn't actually write books. We weren't as creative back then. We were like you guys, when writing your own books when you were uh, real little. Um, and I had to be a nurse first. That was a requirement in my household. Um, we do nursing, and I was a midwife. Um, so I actually wrote my first chapter in a textbook when I was teaching at Georgetown. And then I published my first book when I Did you ask me how old was I when I published my first book? Oh. I was over 30. <laughs> when you did your homework, was your father strict about it? Oh, when I did my homework, was my father strict about it? My father wasn't strict about very much with me, except for two things. He wouldn't let me have a cat, and he wouldn't let me have a Huey Newton poster on my wall. Other than that, I could you know, as long as I was happy and in school and uh, doing reasonably well, my dad was happy. My mother was the strict one in my house with me. How about you? Who's strict in your house? Your mother. Yes, mothers are, you know, my mother's still strict with me. What is your favorite sport? To play or to watch? To play. Well, I loved basketball. I love to ice skate, but my favorite I would have to be swimming. And I still love to swim, and I still swim a lot. Also, what is your favorite sport team? Well, the Dodgers. <laughs> I actually work for Major League Baseball, and I'm supposed to be impartial, but I am loyal to the Dodgers and to the Mets. Everyone else, I, I cheer for while I'm visiting their, their, their um, stadium. Yes. How many books did you write? I've written a total of, se I've published. There's a difference between writing and actually publishing. So, so far I have published seven books and I have uh, three in the various stage of getting published right now. Thank you. Do you write? Do you like to write? No? Do you like to read? But you're gonna read Testing the Ice, aren't you? Oh, good, okay, that will get you started on reading. Do we have any artists in the house? Any artists? You don't have any questions for Kadir, artists? No. I have one more question. All right. How long did it take to make the drawings of this book? Oh, I think that's Kadir's book. It took, uh, it usually takes about three months, three or four months for me to illustrate a book. So that's about how long it took for that book. Um, where did you learn how to paint and how did you come up with that? Is that your favorite style of illustration or? Uh, for, for, uh, for the books that you've done, the, um, the paintings that you've done. Where I did you learn I would say that I have a, a favorite style. I work in a number of styles. Um, <laughs> But I, I've been drawing since I was a little kid. I have an uncle who lives in uh, Maryland, 
who took me under his wing when I was a, uh, about 10 years old and really gave me a very strong foundation in art and also studied art in school. So, I work, like I said, I work in different styles. Um, I really enjoy painting big. I think that's my favorite, is painting really big paintings. Where did you go to school? I went to Pratt Institute in uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> Did you ever go to watch your father's games? Um, I was actually six when my father retired from baseball, so you know I, I remember spring training, but that's because I got to swim. <laughs> okay. When, when your dad was mistreated, uh, over oh, there. <laughs> Hello. I knew that was not that little girl speaking. <laughs> <laughs> When, you're, when your dad was mistreated and had to keep so calm about all of that, did he ever come home and share those experiences at the dinner table? Um, my father was uh, sort of never calm. Um, he just redirected his anger. Um, and that's an important thing for kids to understand. When you watch my father, films of my father playing baseball, he was a very aggressive baseball player. And so that's how he sort of worked out by being the best baseball player he could be and to be able to you know, steal bases and to you know, hit really well and to field well, that was his way of working it through. So he wasn't really calm about it. He was very passionate about it, um, but he just worked it in a way that it, it looked like he was like making it work. But one of my favorite stories from uh, my dad is um, they were at, uh, don't ask me where they were, so we'll forget that part. But anyway, they were at a stadium, and somebody put a, a black hat on the field. And as my father was going out to, field, to the field, they said to my dad, this is your cat clowning, this is your cousin clowning around. So my father was really, really mad about that. So he got up to bat and hit, it, hit into a single. The next person came up, and he, I'm sorry, hit into a double. The next person came up, he made it. Uh, to third, and the next time he came home, and on his way past the, their base, he looked over, I'm sorry, past their dugout, he looked over and he said, well, I guess my cousin's happy now. We are out of time. Um, Kadir and I want to thank you so very, very much. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.